Hi everybody, this is Crystal. So today I'm going to show you how to make this bag here. It's got a little bit of a flat bottom. There's no plastic canvas in it though. Um, it's about 14 inches by 10 inches tall. It's got the leather handles, which of course you can opt out of if you want to and make your own. And I'll show you how to put a nice pretty liner in it. And even though it's made with acrylic yarn, by having that liner in it, you can put whatever you want in it and the bag will never stretch out. And the stitch that we are using is super easy to do. Makes a nice texture. So let's go ahead and get started on this. Okay, for this project, I'm using regular Red Heart Super Saver. It is a medium weight, number four 100% acrylic you don't have to use this brand any type of um, medium weight for yarn will work there's 364 yards in this skein and one will be enough to make the bag the color that i'm using is called cafe latte my favorite red heart super saver color and you're also going to need if you want to line it, you're going to need some fabric. I got this at Walmart next to the buttons. And you'll need some thread and a sewing needle, or you can use a sewing machine. If you want to get the handles that I have, I purchased these off Amazon. And I will put a link below to where you could get these. It is not an it's not an affiliated link. I don't make it no money off of it, but I will just show you where I got them in case you want to use these. Otherwise, you can crochet your own handles, or a good place to get handles is off of old bags from resale shops in the Goodwill store. And then I'm going to be using a size J, which is a six millimeter crochet hook. Okay, and as always, I just want to ask you to take a second not to forget to subscribe to my channel. If you haven't already, if you look in the lower right-hand corner, you'll see a little red subscribe button. If you click on that, you'll never miss any of my uh, updates or any of my videos. Also, I'm going to invite you to uh, come and follow me on Facebook. You'll find the links to my Facebook pages below in the description box. If you make any of my stuff, I'd really like to see it. Have any questions, you can always post them on there. And as always, if you could give this video a like, if you enjoy it, I'd really appreciate it. So... We're going to start off with a chain of 36. Now we're starting on the base of the bag. So once you get your chain of 36 made, we're going to do one single crochet in the second stitch from the hook. And then we're just going to work one single crochet in every stitch for the length of the, of the chain. Just like that. So one single crochet in every stitch until you get to the end of the row. All right, I have made it to the end of row one and you should have a total of 35 stitches now. So what we're gonna do is chain one and turn our work. Now we're gonna do one single crochet in every stitch again. And we're gonna put our first single crochet right here in this very first stitch. That's where our first single crochet goes. And then I'm gonna work one single crochet in every stitch all the way across until I get to the end of the row. like that all right I made it to the end of row two and you still should have 35 stitches now we're just going to repeat row two we're going to chain one and turn single crochet right there into our very first stitch and we're going to continue by working one single crochet in every stitch until you get to the end of the row So we're on row three now. And 
you want to repeat row two until you get a total of five rows. So we're on row three, then we'll do the same thing on row four and row five. You should always have 35 stitches at the end of every row. So I'll meet back up with you when I finish row five. All right, I got my five rows done and you still should have 35 stitches. Now we're gonna go around the whole piece with single crochet. So I ended here at row five. What I'm gonna do is start working down the side. So I'm gonna chain one and I'm gonna put one single crochet in every stitch down the side. So it's gonna be at the end of every row. If you look, you'll put a single crochet here, kind of in between the second to the last and the last stitch. Now when you make it right here, it's, you can see your tail here, we're going to put three single crochets into this corner stitch. Now I'm going to work along the, uh, down the long side, putting one single crochet in every stitch. until I get to my next corner. I feel like I'm wrestling that tail. It's just not wanting to get crocheted in there. So just like this, just work one single all the way across here until you get to your next corner. And I'll meet you right here. All right, I've made it to my next corner and I'm just gonna put three single crochets into that corner. And then I'm gonna work putting one single crochet in every stitch here down the side. And then when you make it right up here to the top, this top stitch up here, we're gonna put three single crochets into that stitch. And then we're gonna work across again, putting one single crochet in every stitch until we get back to our starting point. All right, I've made it back to my starting point and I have one stitch left and I wanna put three single crochets into the last stitch. And now you should have a total of 86 stitches all the way around. We're gonna end by slip stitching into our first stitch over here. Now we're going to slip stitch in the back loop of the stitch. So you see how there's two loops. The one closest to you is the front and the one furthest away is the back. And make sure you're not going into that chain one. The chain one is right here. Here is the first single crochet. So slip stitch into it, the back loop of it. Like that. 86 stitches now. So now I'm going to chain one and I'm going to go into that same stitch but just going through the back loop and I'm going to single crochet. And now I'm going to work my way around putting one single crochet in every stitch back loop only. So you're only going through one loop, the back loop, and you're single crocheting. Nothing special around the corners. We just do one single crochet in every stitch through the back loop only. We're 
We're going to do this all the way around. And you see that ridge it's creating by only going through the back loop. That's what we want. So I'm going to continue working all the way around. One single crochet, back loop only of every single stitch until I get back to my starting point. Okay, I've made it all the way around back to my starting point and you still should have 86 stitches. Now you want to slip stitch. This is the chain one. Don't, don't um, go into that. Go into this first single crochet here and slip stitch going through both loops now. We're not going to be working in the back loops anymore. That was the only time. So 86 stitches now. So that was, uh, we'll count that was row one of the bag, of the main part of the bag. After the base, this is row one. Now we're going to do row two. Row two and three are the repeat uh, round, or rounds two and three are the repeat rounds for the entire bag. Uh, so we're going to start by chaining one, and we're going to single crochet into that very first stitch. So this is round two. Then we're going to double crochet into the next stitch. Single into the next. And then double into the next. And that's what we're going to repeat all the way around. Pretty easy. Single into the next. And then double into the next. single into the next and then double into the next and I'm going to keep repeating this all the way around single and then double single and double all the way around until you get back to your starting point. All right, I've made it back to my starting point. Don't worry if your piece is kind of curling and stuff. It'll look better the more uh, rounds that we do. Okay, so now you should have a total still of 86 stitches. You should always have 86 stitches. Your last stitch should have been a double crochet. Don't get confused with the chain ones here. Make sure you slip stitch right here in your first single crochet. Like that. So for round three, we're going to chain one and we're going to put a double crochet. This time we're going to start off with a double into that same stitch. And then we're going to single crochet into the next. And then double crochet into the next. And then single crochet into the next. So it's pretty much the same thing we did on the on the previous row, except for we just did it starting with a single, we started with a double. So now we will double crochet into the next stitch, which is actually the single crochet from the previous row. And then we single crochet in the next stitch which is actually the double crochet from the next row. So every time there's a single crochet from the previous row, you double crochet into it. And then the next stitch from the previous row will be a double crochet, so that means you single crochet into it. So double crochet and single crochet. That's what it kind of starts to look like. Double crochet and single crochet. Double and single all the way around until you get back to your starting point. All right, I've made it to the end of round three and this time you should have ended in a single crochet since you started with a double. You still will have 86 stitches. Go ahead and slip stitch into your first double crochet. 
And now we're just going to repeat rounds two and three. So for round four, we'll repeat what we did on round two, and that's where we just start with the chain with the chain one, and we single crochet into the first stitch, and then we double into the next, single into the next, and double into the next, single and double, and then when we make it all the way around, we will repeat row three again. So it's always just, every time there's a double crochet from the previous row, just always remember it gets a single crochet. And when there's a single crochet from the previous row, it gets a double crochet. So we're just gonna keep repeating rows or rounds two and three till I get our bag a little bit taller. And remember, it will take a few rows before it starts kind of looking like a bag, but it will eventually. <laughs> but that's what this just kind of starts to look like. All right, now I went ahead and done a total of 22 rounds. And that remember, that counts that very first uh, row of single crochet that we did, 22. Um, but of course, you can make it <clears throat> as tall as you want. You can go up further if you want. But I'll just give you a quick measurement of the height on it. Um, nine inches, and that's only going down to that back where we did the back post stitches. That's not counting any of the any of that bottom there. So <clears throat> about nine inches there. You can go definitely go as high as you want. So I'm going to finish it off by doing some single crochet around the top. I kind of like the way it looks, so I'm not really going to put much of a brim on it. So I just uh, ended my round by slip stitching there into my uh, first stitch. And then I'm going to chain one. Now what I'm going to do is go back into that same stitch and single crochet. And I'm just going to work one single crochet in every stitch. So no more doubles now. We're just going to work one single crochet in every stitch around. Just kind of cleaning up the top edge. <clears throat> Just like that. And we're gonna, I'm gonna repeat that all the way around until I get back to my starting point. All right, I made it all the way around. Now I'm not gonna do any more at the top. What I'm gonna do is just in with the slip stitch in my first single crochet, and I'm gonna tie off my yarn. Now if you wanna put more of a rim on it, that's fine. You can do more rounds of single crochet, or you know, if you want to make it taller, that's fine too. So now before we put the lining on, you want to put your um, handles on. So those come next. So you get your bag situated out here. I kind of always just eyeball how I sew my handles on. Get it as close to being looking even on the bottom. Line it out the top. Now, <clears throat> I got these handles. Now, if you don't have these, remember you can make your own handles but make sure you sew them on before we sew on the fabric that way the stitches from on the inside will be hidden by the fabric okay i just stopped the camera for a minute now i went ahead and sewed one handle on so you can see what it kind of looks like if you're using handles like this but if you're not that's fine you use whatever type that you're going to put on so i'm going to flip it over and i'm going to show i just eyeballed it I don't really take measurements on the handle part, but I'll show you how to sew these on in case you have something similar or maybe you went ahead and bought the same thing. So I'm using some uh, matching thread as close as I could get it. Um, and you want to cut off uh, three or four feet. Give you plenty of 
a room and then you want to thread up your sewing needle like that and I'm going to double my thread so I'm going to pull them down to where my ends meet like this and then I'm going to roll that into a knot so I mean gross but I always lick my fingers <laughs> and then wrap it around like this gotta have the lick on it for the I'm sorry if I'm grossing you out but it gives it better uh helps it roll better and then roll it like that as many as long as you can and then I pull it tight that's how I knot it up and then I'll just clip that little tail off the end now you don't have to do it like me if you do it different but that's kind of how I get my knot at the end just a nice big tight knot so grab my other handle here and I'm just going to try to match it up here to my other side like I said I just eyeball it I don't I always say it's not going to be perfect it's crochet handmade if anybody expects your work to be perfect then I wouldn't even want to be giving it to them okay so you kind of hold it down to where you need it to be get my thread here and my needle now the first time I go under the first stitch like this and then through I don't go from the bottom first because this is gonna hide the knot go through like this In case you don't line your bag this will be a way that you hide your knot there you go so now it's underneath the handle and you got it nice and straight now we're gonna go to the next hole and go all the way through your bag I like to do the first one a couple times so I'm gonna go back through that top hole again I poke my fingers like a a billion times I really need to wear a thimble and then I'll go through the next hole like that now the next uh, I won't go through the other ones twice I only do this first one twice and the next one twice so we just went back through that hole so I'm at the bottom so now I'm gonna come back up through the third hole and it's always so hard to get the holes they don't really have them drilled out that well and like I said I, there we go so I came back up through that third hole and I'm gonna go back through the second hole tight now I'm going to go back through the third hole without poking myself, hopefully, so we don't see no blood. And now I'm going to go down to the fourth hole. Pull it tight. Now I'm going to go back up through the fifth hole trying to keep my piece straight and then back through the fourth hole like that back through the fifth hole again you can probably see kind of the pattern that we're doing and then through the sixth hole then I'm going to jump to the next hole down here that we haven't worked yet and go back up to the next hole you definitely don't have to follow my way I mean <laughs> just as long as you get them sewed on I think that's all that really matters 
Then I'm going to go back down here. Through this hole that we just went through earlier. And then I'm going to go to the next one. Like that. Then I'm going to go over here to the next one that's not worked. And go back through this one. So I'm just going to kind of continue this. You probably get the, the gist of it. All the way up until I get to the top. Alright, I'm coming up to the last hole. And I just kind of go through it twice. So the first and the last hole. And then I just flip it over and kind of knot up my thread on the opposite side. So take it and I kind of just go through some of my of the yarn and then back through the thread and that'll make it a knot and I do that a few times so kind of near the same spot. And then I kind of just weave my thread in a little bit like I would be hiding a yarn tail. And then clip it off and do all the handles the same way. There they are. So, handles are done. Not perfect, but they are done and on so now we need to get ready for the liner so let me move some stuff around here first thing you want to do is take a measurement so make sure your bags laid out correctly <clears throat> now we want to measure from the top all the way down around the base and back around to the other side so i'm going to do it this way so from the top and then all the way around it over to the other side is tw minus 20 inches I'm going to add another inch, so I will cut 21 inches of that away. And then get it all laid out again. You want to do across this way a measurement. Mine is um, almost 14 inches, so I'm going to cut an inch too. I'm going to add 15. So I will cut a piece that is 21 by 15 of your fabric. So here's my fabric. So that's what you want to do. That's how you take your measurements. It's pretty easy to take the measurements. And then you just measure your fabric and cut it. So I'm going to measure my, I measured mine. I added an inch to the, I added an inch to this side measurement and an inch to the one that you go, remember you got to go all the way around and include the base all the way to the other side and add an inch to that. So mine's 21 by 14 after I added my inches. So I'm going to go ahead and cut my piece of fabric with my nice sharp fabric scissors. Thank you to Charlie who sent those to me. I really appreciate that. So I'm going to go ahead and get this cut. I got my my fabric cut and you can see that it hangs over um, at the top and on the sides. And that's fine because it gives you a little leeway to be able to sew it together. But what we're going to do when we sew it is flip it wrong side out. So we don't see no seams or anything like that. That looks funky on the other side. Now you can hand sew this.
what you do is you take some matching thread and a needle and hand sew all the way up both sides. I'm going to use a sewing machine. I'm just going to sew it straight up the sides. Now, uh, go leave about, um, go in. I'll show you a little bit on the hand sewing. What you do is once you get it all straight, just knot your yarn or your thread the same way. Get a good matching thread. And you just would go through. Um, actually, you probably want to leave about a quarter of an inch hanging over on the side, on each side. And then you'd go back down. Hand sewing does take a lot of patience. That's why I'm going to use the sewing machine. Because I still have, you will have to hand sew the top too. But if you don't have a sewing machine, that's fine. I've hand sewn plenty of bags, so it's not it's a doable. And then you kind of just try to keep it in line. Come back up. And then back down. And remember you want to leave about a quarter of an inch or so on each side. That, well, came out. But that's how you do it. Uh, just up and down. All the way up this side. And then all the way up this side. Okay, I got both of my sides sewed up. And you could probably clearly see that I am not near as good with a sewing machine as I am a crochet hook, but that is okay. So what we need to do now is since we have a, we got our side sewed up, but since our bag has a flat bottom, we're gonna make a spot for that. So we're gonna go ahead and bring our bag over here and we need to measure the bottom part and see how big it is. It is two inches. So we're gonna take our bottom piece here. Here's the top, it's not sewn up. Here's the bottom. And we're gonna kinda just take it and grab a corner like this. To where we get two inches kind of like this you see what I'm doing here so that's kind of what you're doing if you look on it on the other side just got to fiddle with it so you get it just about right so we measure two inches since that's how big our base was and that's where we need to sew right there at that two inch line so we just sew right across at the two inch line so you can do that by hand also or you can do a quick zip with your sewing machine and then you want to do the exact same thing on this other corner you just grab it i just have trouble getting it apart and just pull it out like this until your point reaches two inches across and then you sew that up Okay, I've got my corners sewed up like that. So that's kind of what it, it looks like. Now you can clip these off if you want, or you can leave them on. I usually cut mine at, right before the sewing there. You don't have to, though. You can touch it. I mean, it ain't going to make a difference. So there's that. So now we have a flat bottom. So now what we're going to do is put this into our bag but i'm going to show you when we flip it right side out how nice and neat it looks so we got our flat bottom there on both sides well pop it out but that's how that is done um, if you do a lot of bags, I do <laughs> would recommend investing in a sewing machine 
um, you don't have to get a real expensive one. Um, especially if you want to line them all because having to sew them up by hand is, I mean, I've done it plenty of times, but I try to use a sewing machine whenever possible. So now what we're going to do is take our bag. So I flipped that wrong side out again and we're going to put it in our bag like that. So we want to make sure we tuck those corners in. Now we are going to have some excess on the top and that's fine because we're going to pin all that down and that all has to be hand sewn at the top so i'm just going to work with it a little bit like this and get it all those corners down in there straight try to get everything to lay flat as possible and now we're going to do a lot of pinning and and so when which is not my favorite thing to do but we're going to do it because you have to do it at the top so i'm going to take i'm going to take some pins here and i'm just going to work around now what i'm going to do is fold my piece like this i'll just show you this way i guess make sure it's all in there straight Okay, I think that's better. So, I'm going to take my pins and I'm going to flip down the sides like that and pin it across the top. And you want to try to get it pinned as straight as you can. You know, just kind of follow up a row of crochet there. Try to keep it the same all the way around so it looks pretty straight. But we're going to pin it all the way around like this. Just make sure you fold that top edge down so it's not all ratty looking. You know, when you sew it, it'll look nice and clean. You do that all the way around and then you flip this side. Like this. And do the same. Flip it down and put the corners down and you just go around and get it all pinned down and then i'll show you how we hand sew that in all right i got it pinned down pretty good so now i'm going to start just uh sewing it up so you just want to pick a good matching thread i just just using the same dark brown that i use for the handles you can start anywhere you want um probably just start in a corner somewhere and what we're going to do is try to get a good angle to show you is just go through the bottom first. Don't go all the way like, like from here. Go just from underneath the stitch. And then go through like that. And now we're just going to sew it up and keep our stitches as neat as possible. Now I'm not going all the way through the piece. I'm only kind of going through the stitch like that. Like kind of like the top part of the stitch. I'm not going all the way uh, back through the back because you don't want to see your stitches. And then you go back up. Try to keep your stitches in line. And this is what we have to do the, all the way around the bag. You can take your pins out as you go. So I'm going to go over again. Now remember to not go all the way through. And just kind of grab top of the stitches here and come out. And then go back through. Keep it lined up with... Try to keep them evenly spaced and lined up as, you know, just to make them look pretty, as neat as you can. Back through again. I'm going to go ahead and take that pin out because it's kind of in my way. You just take the pins out as you go, as they kind of get in your way. 
go through don't go all the way through just kind of grab the tops of the stitches there like that and this is what I'm going to do the whole way around So I'm going to keep on shocking till I get it all sewed on just like this. That's what it starts to look like. I'm going to work this all the way around until I get back to where I started. All right. Now, once you get it all finished, getting it all sewed up, there it is. It's finished. I went ahead and I just put some beads on the front of mine just for decoration. You don't have to do that. But now since it's lined and it's even though it's made of acrylic, you can still carry stuff in it and it won't stretch out. So that's always nice to line it when you line acrylic back because acrylic's a little bit weaker so doing this makes it where it's not going to stretch out so i think it turned out nice i really really love brown it's my favorite color i love this i'm gonna have to i love roses much better than the brown roses the cream roses beautiful very pretty fabric yeah i think it turned out good i'm happy with it so um if you like this remember don't forget to give this video a thumbs up don't forget to check me out on Facebook. I'll put a link to that below. That way, if you make this, you can show me a picture of it. I'd really love to see it. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. If you look up in the upper left-hand corner right now, you'll see my face. If you click on my face, you automatically be subscribed, and you'll never miss any of my updates. And until next time, have a good day.